Hello. Today's guest is the chairperson for the St. Louis County Council and the St. Louis County Council's first district, Rita Heard Days, today on the Bernie Hayes Show. Welcome back. As promised, my guest is Rita Herdays. She's chairperson of the St. Louis County Council and the councilwoman for the first district of St. Louis County. Good. How are you, Ms. Days? Good morning, Bernie. This is uh, <laughs> great to be here again. It's good to see I you. I always enjoy your shows. We always have good dialogue. Oh, you're very kind. Tell us about the, the position of the chairperson for the St. Louis County Council. What are your duties? Well, it's a lot of duties. I'll tell you, I start with uh, just uh, officiating the meetings. That's the, that's the first thing and probably one of the most important. But there are a lot of paperwork in the background and, uh, you know, making sure that we have our personnel in line and dealing with our, um, our administrative assistants and uh, uh, our clerks. So it, it's a lot that goes into the, uh, the being the chair, and so that that uh, that basically responsibilities fall to you uh, to make sure that the wheels are, are running pretty smoothly. So, uh, but it's good work. I ha it's wonderful people to work with there uh, in the council's office. It's just really really nice. What are some what's on the agenda for this year? Well, we've had a um, tremendous exciting uh, agenda. Basically, you are aware of how we've gone through the pandemic and the ups and downs of that, um, you know, dealing with the uh, department director, and um, he will be leaving in September. He's already uh, um, tendered his resignation, so uh, the county executive will be looking for another health director. But we've looked at uh, how we're going to expend a lot of money that we have received uh, in St. Louis County. Initially, we had the CARES Act, which was $173 million. And then uh, the second phase of that came with the ARPA funding, and all of these are COVID-related monies. So with ARPA, we got $193 million, and uh, we're just about out of that. But uh, there's a lot of needs, and we don't have, even with that kind of money, we just don't have enough money to address all the needs, and uh, that becomes a challenge. So navigating that, navigating how we spend that money uh, and, the, and the programs that we support, it all, it all falls to the chair to guide that process, uh, not to dictate that process, but to guide that process and to make sure that we do the best that we can for our constituents. The last time you were a guest on the program, you were very concerned about health issues in St. Louis County, and the pandemic had just well, eased up a little bit. Well, what's, what's the concern now? Well, basically, this, the uh, issues haven't changed. Mm -hmm. In uh, particularly the North County area, we still have a lot of comorbidity issues that we're uh, uh, dealing with. They have not been addressed. We talk of diabetes and hypertension and high cholesterol, obesity, and those are the kinds of things that have affected our community uh, in, in, in ways that uh, have not affected other, other communities. And so uh, that's, that's uh, something that I'm still trying to work on with the health department, making sure that they understand how important these are you know, to the citizens that we represent. For the first district, you're the council person for the first district. What, what, what are the boundaries? No, 270 to the north, and we do have a new district. So uh, with redistricting, I, um, I dropped uh, Hazelwood and Florissant up north, but it, it stops at 270, and uh, it goes south to Delmar, which is uh, a, a lot of a new area. I did have parts of University City before, but that has expanded. Uh, I go uh, from the city limits to the east and to the west, uh, Highway 170. So... Uh, it's a nice sized district. Uh, I lost um, more population uh, than probably any of the council members, so I had to pick up geography here and there. I see one of the council members are bringing up Jamestown Mall again. Uh, although they, you're not in that district anymore, they still have to come through you. Tell us about what's happening in Jamestown Mall. Well, Councilwoman Webb has been tenacious in uh, making sure that we do what we need to do about Jamestown Mall, and that's tearing it down. And so uh, she's spoken to everybody that will listen. She went to Jefferson City. She talked to the governor. The governor was able to put $6 million in, uh, in, in the budget, in the, his ARPA a budget for Jamestown Mall. And the county council was able to match that to $6 million. So right now we have enough money 
uh, that we can tear down Jamestown Mall and uh, you know get rid of that eyesore. You as well as I know how difficult it was to drive by beautiful neighborhood, beautiful um, homes in the neighborhood, and that sits there as an eyesore. So we were able to get that, and uh, you know, kudos to Councilwoman Webb to uh, she she ran on that. That is what her uh, campaign promise was: elect me. And I'm going to get rid of Jamestown Mall, and so she has done that. So we work very well together. We, uh, she represents the fourth, I represent the first. So we call ourselves the 14th because anything that is uh, affecting my district in the first also affects hers in the fourth. I can understand that. Now, y'all, you also work uh, very well with the new St. Louis County Police Chief, and also with the prosecutor Wesley Bell. Tell us about that. Well, the chief has been very uh, responsive to calls that I make. Uh, looking at whatever is happening in the neighborhood. <clears throat> we had some major challenges in Jennings, and uh, Jennings is one of the municipalities that we contract with. And so we've just had a lot of uh, accidents on that St. Cyr 365 corridor. And so talking with Captain Mann, uh, as well as the chief, we've been able to address that uh, uh, and, uh, and, and looking to a even do more because it's just speeding and people are not paying attention to stop signs and running stop lights. It's, this, is, this is unprecedented. I've never seen this kind of behavior uh, with drivers ever. So, uh, so we're, we're going to uh, look at, at how we can you know, better utilize resources to do that. But the chief has been extremely responsive in that. And, and of course, we'll talk about the uh, prosecuting attorney, you know, a little bit late, but later. But he has been uh, very instrumental in helping us with the Kenlock Project. Mm -hmm. So I really want to go into that one because that's, that's just, it's something that's been hanging over our heads for a long time as well. Do, is, it, is it still a joy for you to go to work every day? Because I know there are so many problems. <laughs> we look at the news, uh, different channels and so forth, and, and see different things going on in different parts of the county. And all that kind of settles on your shoulders, it seems, you being the chairperson. Well, it does uh, as a chairperson, but also as representing a very challenged district. The first district is, is challenged with many of the ills that happen in St. Louis County will be happening in the first. And so uh, I, I go to work every day uh, feeling very, very happy about what I'm doing. I'm excited about addressing the needs of, uh, of my constituents and getting out there in the community. And now that, you know, COVID is subsiding somewhat, you know, I'm able to get out and, and, and talk to people face to face. Uh, that, that's absolutely a, a thrill for me. I've done that for my political career. And uh, it was really a setback when I was not able, I had to see people on the computer. I didn't like that at all, so. <laughs> How can one reach you as a Sir Lewis County Councilwoman? Well, we have our phone number, I think it's gonna be on the screen there, 314-615 is uh, 5436 is the office number, but my campaign number is 314-722-6628. And uh, that's for anything campaign related. We don't mix the two, so if sure. you have a, you know, yard sign, you want to do some volunteer work, uh, make phone calls or whatever you can do uh, to assist me with the campaign, that 722-6628 is the number to call. So I didn't realize you were up for re-election. Tell us about that. Well, it is, uh, it is August 2nd is the election date, and I have been working extremely hard, have a fantastic team that is helping me nowadays. You, you have a lot of people, when I used to run, a lot of people would volunteer for some of the activities that we have, like doing door to door. And uh, nowadays people wanna be paid to do that kind of work. So I have to be on the phone raising money so that I can pay people to walk and, and uh, you know, do my phone banking and those kinds of things. But I stu still have a cadre of volunteers who are extremely instrumental in helping me to get my message out. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going very, very well. I just received the um, endorsement of the Ferguson Township last evening. So I, I think things are going well. I noticed that you work very well with most of the mayors in, in St. Louis County also. Oh, absolutely, yeah. because my area has most of the municipalities, and I represent 40 mayors and city councils. And uh, so that, that's uh, important that I be able to establish a relationship with those folks. I need to, you to tell us the phone number once again, please. 314-615-5436 is the official office number. So if uh, there's anything county-related that you need, that is the number that you need to call. Rita Heard Days, the chairperson of the St. Louis County Council and the first, first council district 
first district in the St. Louis County is my guest. And, and we'll be right back after this. Behind me is the New Life Evangelistic Center Administrative Offices in Overland, Missouri. And this is where we shoot our shows for um, our worship shows and the Here's Help Network. And it's also where Zakid Baroudi and Bernie Hayes shoot their shows. You can find all of these shows at the New Life Evangelistic Center app, the NLEC TV app. You can also access them on your tablet or on your computer. And this is how you can stay up to date with all the things that New Life Evangelistic Center is doing. There are so many different programs that we've got going on, and God is doing many exciting things through partners like you. So if you want to support the work that New Life is doing, then please uh, access and give through the app. You can go online at nlecstl.org or give us a call at 314-421-3020. Again, 314-421-3020. But this is the best way to get him plugged into the amazing work that New Life is doing through people like you. And so we ask that you share your much-needed gifts right now. We are out on the streets uh, every single day through our street patrol. We, are, we have big rallies on Friday where we give bus tickets and clothing and food. We have a new Ukrainian homesteading program where we will sponsor and invite Ukrainians to begin their new life here in the United States. Uh, we have a, a center in Springfield and New Bloomfield and House Springs and all throughout Missouri. And so there is something for you to get involved in today. And we are so thankful for our partners. Only through uh, the grace of God and your gift are we able to bless others today. Welcome back. My guest is Rita Her Days. And uh, she's the chairperson for the St. Louis County Council and also the representative for the first district of the council. Uh, Stace, um, I know for a long, many years, you've contributed to the New Life Evangelistic Center. You brought food and clothing and so forth. And you asked me today, uh, what's the progress of them coming to uh, reopening 1411 Locust Street? So well, what's the situation of the homeless in, in St. Louis County? Well, we have a significant population of homeless. They're just pretty much scattered about. Uh, we don't have a concentration, if you will, uh, of, of homeless people, but they are there. And, uh, and so, you know, a lot of people think out of sight, out of mind. But, you know, we do have challenges facing that community. Uh, we do have a woman's shelter uh, in St. Louis County, and that's basically for women and children who uh, need, the, need the services there. But for, you know, the general population, we don't really have a facility for that. And uh, I, I think that uh, it's, it's, it's incumbent upon us to take care of the least of ours. I think that's what we're charged to do on an everyday basis. And I think it's important that we look to that and figure out how we can handle that. You know, many folks uh, in, in the homeless community have mental health issues. Uh, they may have physical uh, issues that have not been dealt with as well. And so I think it's incumbent upon us who have to do for those and care for those who have not. So it's a, it's, it's a challenge. It is a challenge. And you know, we have the heat. We have um, opening, we have opening uh, of uh, cooling centers so people can at least get, get some kind of respite from, from the heat. And in the winter, of course, we have uh, heating shelters as well to do that. But that's on a daily basis, and that's, you know, temperature controlled. But it's nothing consistent that we can look at and go to and say, this is how we help our homeless population. Ms. Days, you've held several offices in the state of Missouri. Would you just tell us who Rid of Her Days is and some of the offices you've held? Well, interestingly enough, I, I started in this business in a uh, in, uh, long time ago as a uh, school board member in the Normandy School District. And um, usually when you have children and you get involved in that and um, looking for representation actually was what, um, what my focus was in, in, in the school district because <clears throat> the school district had changed and was changing and we did not have the African-American representation to go along with the changes. And I thought that was important. So as part of a mother's club, if you will, that turned into a parent's club, if you will, that uh, they were successful in getting me elected to the school board. And uh, after that, it was just off to the races, I guess you'll say. Many of these positions, I did not say, you know, I'm going to get up one morning and I'm going to be a state representative or I'm going to be the senator. 
Most of, of, of these, uh, these positions came to me as a result of the work that I have, I've been doing. And so starting with the school district and moving into the state representative position and then onto the Senate. So it's been a, a, a very good career. Uh, a career has, that has uh, been couched in uh, a selfless kind of, um, of attitude and what I bring to the community. I, I consider myself a public servant, not necessarily a politician, but I know that that is the label that they put on folks who do the work that I do. But I think serving the community is probably one of the most important and rewarding jobs that, that you can possibly do. So I'm pleased and humbled that the folks considered me uh, a good fit for this and continue to do so. And you've also been uh, responsible for the election boards. Uh, and how important is people to get out and register now? Well, you know, that is, uh, that is true. I was the director of elections for almost four years there. And uh, getting people to understand how important it is to cast your ballot. We had uh, people that say, I only vote in the presidential. Well, that's every four years. And, but knowing how important these local races are and, and selecting your mayor and selecting your city council and selecting your county council people, these are the people that are, more, are closer to you and really help you on a day-to-day -day basis. It's good to concentrate on the Senate and the Congress in, in D.C., but when it comes to your bread and butter issues, where you are located in your different municipalities, that's crucial. And that's what probably is going to give you the best bang for your buck. But we know that there's uh, efforts afoot to uh, take away some of the rights that we have. And, and you know, as African Americans, we have fought very, very hard to get the right to vote. And so, you know, with this uh, latest uh, legislative effort, uh, you know, you're going to now have to provide a uh, photo ID in order to vote. So the information that comes from the election board is going to no longer be valid. Well, some people don't drive. Some people don't have the necessary credentials in order to get um, a photo ID. So I, I think it's a step backwards in terms of voting rights for a lot of people, but particularly African-Americans. Mm -hmm. And August 2nd is the Primaries. That's, that's the primaries, correct? August 2nd is the primary, yes. And yeah. so um, that's generally a low turnout vote. I, you know, I suggest to people, you know, I want you to support me, but get out there and vote. There are a lot of other issues on this, um, on this uh, ballot this time that I think are very, very important to people. And so I do want to have an opportunity to talk about some of those as well. Okay, so you're actually running for the council again. I saw, I saw some posters, some uh, literature uh, on you. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. yes. I am running for uh, re-election to the county council. And mm -hmm. uh, so that election, again, is August 2nd. And I'm looking for, you know, the support of the people that have always been there for me. Uh, and I, I do hope that they can they see their way to make sure that I'm doing a good job at this position and continue to keep me there. we got a lot of work to do. When's the last I'm time? What, what was the last date to register for this election? Well, oh, I don't really know that mm -hmm. offhand. But it's close, right? I, I don't know that offhand. Mm -hmm. But if you call the election board, okay. and I don't want to give that number either because I think it's 615-1800, mm -hmm. I think, is the election board. Um, but, you know, look that up, and you can probably Google that and find that out. But uh, it's important to make sure that you have all the credentials uh, so that you can vote on August 2nd. And that's the best way to find out. Call the election board and they'll give you that information. And how important is your re-election? Oh, I, I think it's crucial. Um, we are in the middle of a lot of things and doing a lot of things. And so I, want, I think that continuity is important. Uh, and so that's why I want to continue on. We have a lot of projects in place. I want to see that uh, those come to fruition. And uh, someone else may not have the passion or the expertise or even the experience to follow through on a lot of things that I'm working on. And so I really want to make sure that I get back there and bring those projects to a close. I know you brought rental assistance to so many in the county. Tell us about that. ERAP, uh, mm -hmm. Emergency Rental Assistance Program. And that's when we were going through the pandemic and a lot of landlords were you know, kicking people out. And you know, in the wintertime, uh, it was just unconscionable that you would have people to do that. But people fell on hard times. They lost their jobs. They lost health care. 
And so that ERAP money, along with an eviction moratorium, was really important uh, so that we could keep people in their homes, keep them safe, and not add to the homeless population. Uh, and so that was, uh, that was quite a bit of money that we put toward that effort. So we were able to address a lot of issues with that. And so I'm very, very pleased to you know, have had that legislation and, and saw that legislation across the finish line. That was very key. And women and, and minority-owned businesses, you kind of supported that too, didn't you? Well, we had a small business uh, uh, loan program or grant program, if you will. And of course, in the first district, we have a lot of mom and pop operations. And so putting together the resources so those folks could stay afloat. You know, when you shut down businesses, you shut down uh, all kinds of, of opportunities there, people didn't have a way to uh, earn a living. They didn't have, no one was... Uh, patronizing these these uh, facilities. And so they were going out of business. And unfortunately, we had quite a few people going out of business in the in the first. But uh, hopefully, hopefully they're, they're on their way back. Uh, I, I'll talk a little bit about Kathy's Kitchen that closed for a little while. And it really was devastating for a lot of restaurants because people just were not eating out because of the pandemic. So really her days is our guest today. And she's the council person for the St. Louis District First Council District, and also she's the chairperson for the St. Louis County Council. And we have so much more to talk about after we come back. Will you help New Life Evangelistic Center get back into 1411 Locust Street? Your tax deductible gifts are urgently needed at this particular time, and there's many different ways that we're working to get back in that facility. One of the ways is to continue to inform the community through the Bernie Hayes Show and other programs. And if you haven't supported the Bernie Hayes Show and the work of New Life Evangelistic Center, Please do it now. It's urgently needed. Your gifts are deeply appreciated. So many homeless people are waiting to get back into 1411 Locust, and so many others need the direct help that New Life is trying to provide at this time, but is facing some real financial needs, and that's why your gift is very, very important. And to express our thankfulness for all of you that are sharing your gifts, we want to send you this special Bernie Hayes Cup. It's my wife's favorite drinking cup. She loves to drink out of this cup, and this is actually the only coffee cup she wants to use is the Bernie Hayes cup. It's something very special about this cup, and we'll send it to each one of you that share a gift of $25 or more with the New Life Evangelistic Center and ask for your Bernie Hayes cup. It's P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, that's 63166. Today's subject is Barbara Jordan. Texas Congressional Representative Barbara Jordan rose to the national stage from Houston's largely African-Americans' fifth ward, becoming a public defender and the U.S. Constitution and a leading presence of democratic politics for two decades. She was the first black woman elected to Texas State Senate and the first black Texan in Congress. As a member of the House Judiciary Committee, she gave the influential opening speech of Richard Nixon's 1974 impeachment hearings. Her speech was a staunch defense of the U.S. Constitution, but she noted had not initially included African-Americans in it, we the people. Jordan died of leukemia-related pneumonia in 1996, breaking barriers even in death. She became the first African-American to be buried among the governors, senators, and congressmen in the Texas State Cemetery. Barbara Jordan. With God, all things are possible. When I go on a daily prayer walk, often it seems like it's totally impossible that a great revival could take place if I see house after house. I can pray right now, Lord, let your revival unfold. Let those in this house and the houses all over our community come to know you, Jesus. This morning as I walked, I went to an area where a man had been killed, and I prayed for all the violence in our community. I believe that God is a miracle-working God. We can begin to pray for revival. We can come up in the name of Jesus against all the violence in our community. We can pray that His love will move in a great and mighty way. It's happened in the past, and it can happen now. Let us begin to pray for revival. In order that, for that to happen, we have to be revived. We have to ask the Lord to forgive us. We need to forgive others. And we need to let His grace and power and love flow in us and through us. This is the hour. The Spirit of God wants to move across to our community. Let's go to Him in prayer. Let's let the Holy Spirit work in us and through us. And let's watch Him do exceedingly on what we can even ask or think. Welcome back. My guest is the chairperson for the St. Louis County Council, Brenda Heard Days. And also she's up for re-election for the 1st District of the St. Louis County. Uh, Ms. Days, um, you know, I used to go to different churches and and who'd be sitting on the front row but the Red of Her Days. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about your faith. 
Well, it, it's important. <laughs> Actually, you know, my faith is what has kept me through a lot of this. People say, how do you sit there, you know, on Tuesdays and listen to these people and, you know, everybody's complaining. And, you know, I, I know that there's there's someone in charge and it's not me. I You know, I hold that gavel uh, for that length of time on the council. But, you know, having a how, higher power, having a, a, a center for me, and, and, and that's, that's a Christian base. Uh, and I've, I've been uh, uh, part of a church since growing up in small town uh, 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 Missouri, small town Louisiana. The church was the focal point of our communities. Everything that happened happened around the church and school. So you had the boy, the Girl Scouts, and you had uh, extracurricular activities. And so with the, with the combination of the schools, that's where we were most of the time at, at the church and at the schools. So I've grown up with that background, and and I I, I think it has kept me centered. Uh, for all these years and what is important and how important it is to reach out to others and to be compassionate. And so that has just kept me uh, on the straight and narrow for a long, long time, you know, looking at what does this look like? Uh, and and we have a saying uh, sometimes in, 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 my, in my church particularly, you know, that would by the grace of God go I. So many people, you know, one, two, and, and maybe these days only one paycheck away from being in a situation that they did not anticipate. And so uh, I, I'm just very pleased to be uh, um, a servant here and uh, and look at that how I can serve my my. my um, my uh, greater serve the greater good in terms of my constituents and other Christian people. So it's important. What church do you belong? I belong to New Sunny Mount. Uh, pastor Brandon, uh, Brandon Blake is uh, our leader, our pastor, and uh, our spiritual uh, spiritual leader. And uh, he's doing a very good job. He's a relatively young minister yeah. uh, coming out of Tennessee, and uh, but he has really brought the church. Uh, along even through the pandemic you know they had the streaming live and that kind of stuff so we marked into what needed to happen in order to keep things going so uh but see, very pleased to be a part of the new son in my family and when you see reverend hunter donald hunter please tell him hello for me yes now, how can one reach you and how can one help you if you need assistance in your re-election well uh, if, if they will put that number back on there i don't have it to memory but it's 314 Seven two two six six two eight is a telephone number that you can call if you need a yard sign, if you want to volunteer, if you want to do door-to-door -door campaigning with me. And right now we're knocking on doors and specifically asking people, you know, for their support for my campaign. Uh, if you want to make phone calls to that uh, effort, or you know, just come by the office and uh, help us put together signs. Everyone is welcome and everyone is needed because, you know, again, we're on a very short timeline here. I think right now we're four weeks out and uh, all these things are coming together and I'm going to be uh, billboards going up. And so it, it's a it's a mammoth undertaking, really. And so, again, you know, if you want to make a donation, that's also on my website there. You can donate online. Uh, you can donate uh, to my uh, Address 2821 Ridgeview 63121 is the address, and uh, so I'm just open to all assistance that I can get for this campaign. That's so the coming down to the wire. Website is <laughs> www.ridderdays.com. Is that correct? That is correct. And also uh, your email, ridder at, at ridderdays.com. That okay. is correct. So they can reach you to each one. And once again, the phone numbers. People tend to forget phone numbers. Uh, uh, 314 722 Six six two eight. That's the campaign phone number. Well, we have only a few minutes left, a few seconds left. Actually, anything you want to say in, in party? Well, you know, I, I think that once we get out here <clears throat> and we figure out what we need to do and how we need to do it for the greater good, I continue to say this is not about me. This is about helping the people of the 1st District. And as, as, as that goes, the, as the 1st District goes, the other parts of the county go as well. So when they always say, uh, uh, when the tide rises, all boats rise with the tide, that's basically where we are. So our challenged communities need a little bit more support, but with that, it helps all St. Louis County citizens. And that's what it's about, helping all the people, particularly the folks in the first district. So I do appreciate this opportunity. I appreciate your support. I appreciate uh, this, this opportunity with coming uh, before you. Uh, and Bernie has been an absolutely fantastic partner. Uh, in all of my endeavors, and so I'm really appreciative for that. And thank you. Thank you so very much for that. Oh, you're so very kind for visiting with us, and I want to say good luck to you. And tell everybody hello for me. 
Maria Chappelle. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and uh, everybody else. And good luck to you, Miss Days. Thank you. And we're the New Life Evangelistic Center, 2428 Woodson Road in Overland, Missouri. I am Bernie Hayes. Reverend Larry Rice has been here for 50 years supporting you. Keep supporting him. Have a good day. <laughs>